Hey guys, Sandra with GY6 Vids. Let's practice something a little bit different today. Yeah, that'll do. Not exactly in the middle, but that's why we train. Check this out. We do not want to be hit with a tomahawk. Holding through. Hey guys, this is Andrew with GY6 Vids. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you something that I've never done on my channel before, and it's a skill and a hobby of mine that I've never expressed or shown on my channel either. I'm always doing guns or flamethrowers or explosions or ballistics testing, you name it, I try to do it. But I think it's about time I brought into something that I've got probably the biggest passion for, and that is blades. Uh, I've always been a blade nut, and I think it's one of my biggest passions. I collect blades almost as much as I collect guns. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Another fun thing about blades that I like is the fact you can throw them. And today, in today's video, I'm going to discuss how you can properly train to throw a knife or to throw an axe, as well as the blade I just showed you. Uh, DMO Knives is a great knife company. They sell high-end knives and high-end axes. Um, this is not your mom and pop store knife. Now, that doesn't change the fact that these are better throwers. These are strictly a Skinner or a hunting knife, and this is a tomahawk they custom made for me after they found out that I wanted to do a throwing axe video. They definitely were down to help out and provide one of these kick-ass custom axes they have. But that's not to say that you have to have a high-end knife to be able to throw it. Um, a lot of people have the cheap little throwers that you can get off eBay or stuff like that, but the problem with those is they can possibly break. So as you throw them, they could, the metal's so cheap, it fractures kind of like graphite almost and just snaps in half and you're screwed. It's another reason why I stick with all metal axes and not a wooden handled tomahawk. I can throw those too, but the problem with it is, like I said, you can get the cheapest Walmart axe and practice with that. That's what I trained on. And when I first started, I started with a cheap little I think it was like $5, $10 camp axe you find in the camping section at Walmart. And I just started chucking that thing at a tree. And I was glad I bought it because it had a metal handle in it. And I kept hitting handle and sideways and all over the place, missing and throwing and hitting rocks in the ground. And if you have a wooden handled tomahawk, which looks cool, don't get me wrong, and I like tomahawks. They have plenty of uses. But if you've ever thrown a tomahawk, you're going to break a handle. <laughs> and if you say you've thrown tomahawks and never broke a handle, you haven't thrown a tomahawk then. Um, so training with something that you can throw consistently without worrying about it breaking is huge. Another thing is getting a knife that doesn't have a sharp backing to it or really sharp edges where you're holding it, especially when you have to hold it by the blade. Sometimes you have to hold it by the handle, sometimes you have to hold it by the blade, depending upon rotation and distance from your target. So as you can see behind me is my target. Now this is just a regular wooden pallet. Problem with wood is it's hard, and unless you're hitting directly on your blade, it's gonna go tang and fly off where you can break your ax or you can break your knife, and that's not what you want. So what I've done is on the front of it, I've put layers of cardboard. Now you can go to like a local grocery store and ask for slip sheets, which are flat pieces of cardboard. They'll most likely give them to you for free. Or you can go to Walmart, which I did. You can buy them for, I think, a buck or 50 cents, and I buy 20, 30 of them at a time. This way, it allows you not only to have a cheap target that you can move around and staple up or tape up any place you want, but it also allows as a training tool. You can throw out a hard target all day long, but every time you miss, you're not sure if you over-rotated or under-rotated in your throw. So you never know where you're holding it wrong or how far you're away and where to train on that. Whew. Man. It is hot here in Texas. So we have the cardboard here like I was talking about. We have about two to three inches that we've stapled up and white duct taped up on the board just to keep it in place. And that allows you to see your impact points, which is a teaching segment. Uh, it's not just to protect whatever your target is, but it's also to teach you how you're throwing wrong or how you're throwing properly. Uh, let me explain it to you real quick with the ax first. So as you throw, you have the option to throw real hard or real soft. It's up to you but stick with whatever you're good at. So if you wanna throw real hard and really get a good deep impact with your ax or your knife, stay consistent with your throw. Just like a pitch in baseball or a spiral in football, you wanna stay consistent with that. You just kind of vary that when you know there's a different distance and a different target. Same thing, that simple. Don't let anybody tell you throwing an ax or a knife is too hard for you to do, it's not. It's just about practice and practice and practice. And cardboard allows you to see your impact points, which is gonna make you not crazy. Because when you throw out a hard surface, it's gonna be like, bah! And you'll not know what happened. 
So yeah, that's my point. You will never know where you're impacting. All you're gonna do is just get more and more frustrated and you will have great throwing practice because you're gonna throw your ax or your blade into the trash or into the woods, somewhere where you never wanna touch it again. That's not what we want. So knowing where you impact is important. You are never gonna know exactly how far you're away from your target. You don't have a range finder for every step you take. You're never gonna know the exact details, but you do wanna practice proficiently by taking a couple steps back, throwing it. Another couple ste steps back, throwing it. And the more you do that, the more you'll realize where your rotation points are. You're like, okay, two steps for me is a quarter rotation or a half rotation, and you train with that. So if your ideal point is to hit perfectly flat with this blade like this. So say you throw and you impact and it sticks like this, okay? That's gonna show you that this ax rotated you know, a quarter of a turn too far and you wanna back it off a little bit. Well, backing off the rotation is done by two things. You can either step forward and it's gonna impact here now because when you step forward, there's less distance for it to fly through the air, which means it doesn't have time to rotate all the way. Or you can hike your hand up on the ax. The higher you hold your hand, the slower the rotation. So if you held here, okay, and you threw and it impacted here, if you were to hold here on the next row, it's most likely gonna impact perfectly flush. And that all depends upon how hard you're throwing it as well, okay? If you're throwing it super, super hard, you might be able to get a full rotation out of one step forward or one step back. So you can kind of work it off of that. That's the way you wanna practice for throwing an ax. I like to hold the ax perfectly flat like you're shaking a hand. Okay, so you shake someone's hand, same thing, hold on to the ax, same way. You just hike your hand up or down, that simple. Uh, I put my thumb on the back of the tang, so the back the metal strap of the handle, I put my thumb there. And what it does, it acts as a guider, so as I throw, I let it go here. It's not like an, a knife, which I'll show you in a second, where you have to flip your wrist a little bit to get more rotation, but this one, you're kind of just, boom, you're letting the motion of your arm and the motion of your body throwing forward do the rotating for you. You don't have to flick your wrist or else it's gonna screw up your rotation, which you don't want. So don't let people tell you that you have to throw only a certain way. The biggest thing you want to remember is when you let this blade go and you're throwing it at your target, as it leaves your hand is that this stays straight to your target. Because if it starts flying like this, you're gonna see it because it'll impact like that. So you can have a perfect stick, but it's gonna be sideways. It most likely won't stick, but at a point in part, it will. And you'll see a sideways angle and that's where this cardboard comes in handy. But as you throw through, make sure not to turn and throw sideways through a baseball spin or like a sidearm pitch or hack, like I, call, I like calling it, which is coming over your head too far where the blade's gonna be at this angle now. Okay, so you gotta pay attention to that. The biggest key is consistency and straight ahead throwing that allows us to rotate this way. Now that is with an ax. Now with a knife, what I've noticed, ah, oh, cloud cover, nice. I won't have to sweat as much, but in regards to the DMO Breacher, like I was talking about, this is meant for hunting. It's got a lot of good weight behind it. It's a hog slaying machine, um, but I like the weight of it to me. You guys may not like it. So like I said, depends upon the knife you wanna use, whether it be a cheap Walmart knife that you're throwing, a uh, cheap little eBay thrower knife, whatever it is, practice with it. I prefer more weight behind my throwers rather than a lighter knife because when it flies through the air, the wind doesn't affect it as much. Just like a heavier caliber round as it flies through the air when you're shooting, it doesn't get thrown off by the wind. Like a 22 projectile will get thrown off much easier from a little gust of wind than say a 223 or a 308 because the bullet's heavier. Same thing with a blade. As it flies through the air, the wind resistance will throw off your throw no matter how good you are if the blade's too light. So, and as I throw, I prefer to throw holding the blade flat where I pinch my fingers together. Now everyone's different, you might wanna hold differently, but I prefer this is the best case. You hold the blade and you're coming through just like you're doing a Darth Vader choke grip, just coming right on top of the blade and pinching down. You wanna obviously stop yourself from getting on the blade, you wanna cut yourself, but overhead I come here and I throw just like a baseball. It's almost identical with my throw. How I throw it is just like a baseball. Over your shoulder, then trying to get this whole like, huh, huh, that's not really, it's not fun and you really lose your speed and overall power behind your throw. It's about the rotation and consistency just like the ax. You can hold by the handle. So you can hold by the handle and throw it or you can hold by the blade and throw it. Biggest thing is consistency and coming directly over top of your shoulder in a straight line to keep that flying through the air straight. So as it impacts, it's here and not here. <laughs> so if it catches an edge as it flies through the air and rotates sideways and impacts flat, yeah, you're done. And it won't even stick in the cardboard, it'll just hit and fall on the ground. But the nice thing about cardboard is you will hear that slap and you'll see it almost like if you pay attention when it impacts, you'll see if it's hitting flat. And that's gonna tell you that your 
knife is rotating too much through the air and your release is the problem. So back to what we were talking about with rotation with a blade or a throwing ax. If you are holding higher on the blade, say this is your primary hold section and you hold higher onto the grip, it's gonna slow rotation because as you throw, it's gonna go real slow, okay? It may not have the cool sound effect, but it's gonna go real slow. If you kind of hike the knife up in your hand and throw more from the tip of the blade, that rotation is gonna be quick. It's gonna start spinning real fast. So woo and whew, obviously sound effects aren't there, but you can keep them in your head if you like. <laughs> uh, it's about, like I said, all about consistency and rotation. And now the final stage is how far you step forward or back. So if you are trying to throw and say you throw at 10 feet away and you impact, boom, like this, you know you were 180 degree rotation. When I say full rotation, that means opposite. Okay, so obviously it's not 360 degrees because then you'll end up right back in a crappy spot. <laughs> and that's what I mean by a full rotation. You want 180 degree change. So boom to boom. So what you need either is you need to slow down your rotation, which is hike your hand up. And what it would do is rather than rotating too much, it's gonna rotate to only about here. Or another change you can do is stepping back or forth from the target. So if you're at 10 feet and you step forward to nine feet, you're gonna be closer which means the knife's gonna have less time in the air to rotate. You're gonna have to practice and see where your distance, your style of throwing, the weight of the blade, all these things come into effect. Just like when you're shooting a gun, you can say you're great with a 22, but you could suck with a 308. Now, just because you have great trigger pull doesn't mean you know the ballistics drop of a bullet. It's the same thing with a knife. If the knife is too heavy, it's gonna obviously fly a little bit differently than a lighter knife would. So you can't say like, oh, I can throw a cheap little eBay thrower. Well, that doesn't mean you can throw this, that's for sure. Uh, you need to practice. Now you'll have the general mechanics and the knowledge of how to train with that new knife and you're gonna have to go back out and train with it. So that is the way you train. Know your distance, know how to hold your blade that you feel comfortable with, stay directly over shoulder and train, train, train. Just like shooting. If you wanna throw knives, go out and start throwing knives. So let's get into some throwing. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with rotation and you'll get more of an idea what I'm talking about. I also have USMC fighting knife. This is the K-Bar. A lot of people know what the K-Bar knife is. This is one of those blades I love throwing. Uh, it's got a good weight to it. It tends to constantly spin and you'll hear a difference and, and I know the rotation is slower because of that. So I train with this differently than I do with the DMO Breacher or with smaller throwing knives. So like I was saying, whether you're using a cheap little thrower like this little guy right here that you would find on eBay uh, it doesn't really matter. You practice with it and you get better with it. You learn your distances. This one I know about roughly 10, 12 feet where I'm at right now, it'll stick. Its weight is lighter. Now, if I were to switch over to the DMO knife, and this is the breacher, it's a lot heavier. And I'm used to that weight. So you can see that my throw is consistent for that blade because I like throwing that one the most. Now, with, say, K bar, K bar blade that a lot of people don't think you can throw, you can. Hold in a certain spot, stand at a certain distance, and you'll stick a lot of the time. That one's slightly a little over rotated. As you can see, the blade's sticking down rather than straight in. I'm about to get dumped on the rain here in a second. So, because I know that the blade went too much rotation, here comes the storm. Because the blade hit here, I got to slow down the rotation, which means I bring myself a little bit further forward, right here. And that's a little bit straighter now. Now with the tomahawk, you have a tomahawk here, bring on the storms! <laughs> you throw it this way, and most likely you'll be able to impact your target pretty straight on. Dead center. Yeah. Say you go back and back and back and back and back and say you go to about, it's about twice the distance, about roughly 23, 24 feet. It tends to capture the wind and start moving. Now granted there's no wind right now, but it starts moving. And uh, this rain's gonna be a pain in the butt of my cameras, but you know what, you gotta see this. As it flies through the air, it starts get, capturing that, that wind in the air itself and it starts tumbling and throws off target. So what should stick from this distance like I usually see with a normal knife might not stick. Let's see. Oh, kind of does. But you can see it was just kind of like all over the place and impacted in a really funky way. So the DMO knife though, at this distance, 
it should be able to stick. Seeing how I hit slightly over, I want to speed up the rotation a little bit. I'm just going to take a half step back and see what happens now. That still, that just hit the point of the, of the knife. So that just hit the point of the knife. What used to be a dry surface for the blaze to land on is now completely drenched. Ugh. So now that it impacted here, it was just giving the point of the knife in. So if I were to step back a little bit further, it's going to give it more time to rotate, or I can hold down a little bit lower, which I'm going to do. Okay, that's a little high, but it impacted perfect. Now let's try the axe at this distance. Now the axe, like I said, is very similar. You hold it the same way, but you want to throw and let go here rather than twisting your wrist at the very end like you would with a baseball and flipping it. You never know. Okay, impact perfect. Uh, just off target, see if I can do it again. So same spot, same hold, coming through. Now it's getting a little bit more dead center. We not want to be hit with a tomahawk. Holding through. We'll take that one. Storms are coming in. Much more to come with throwing axes and throwing knives. Hope you appreciate it. Hope it made sense. I want to help. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comments section. Hit me up on Instagram where I post the behind the scenes stuff and also pictures that you can ask questions on as well. Or on my Facebook page, at GY6Vids. Or you can leave a comment in this video and I can try to answer the best I possibly can. But I just get a lot of comments and get busy sometimes. So, yeah, lightning. We got to go. <laughs> this is Andrew with GY6Vids. I hope you appreciate the video. I will see you very soon with more to come with some very interesting products. I'll see you next time.